Today we're working on our 1998 Kawasaki ZXI 1100. We're rebuilding the carburetors. We're going to take them off and show you exactly how to do this. There's six of these long bolts that are on either side of the throat of the carburetor, which have to be taken out to be able to get the carburetors off. Two screws right on this bracket that bolts to the block that you'll have to take out. Once you get the three carburetors off, there's actually these plastic caps. I've gotten all four screws out of this copper plate. So now when you lift it up, you notice, let's see how it goes. As you lift it up, you'll notice there's a spring on the back side of it. So we're going to take that out. It goes down inside that hole on the top of this cone right here. And now there's this diaphragm. You'll notice that there's a little small metal piece right here in the tab. And you want to be careful not to tear this because these do, these do have to be removed to get down to some of the other parts you need to clean. And this just lifts right out of there. It has a metering valve on it. There's also that little small piece of metal stuck in the side of that diaphragm rubber. You make sure you don't lose that piece. Now with the piece out, you can actually inspect it and see if there's any holes or tears you know, anywhere on it. When you're storing this, I would keep it as upright and flat as you can because you don't want to get this distorted. So there's basically two screws that come out of that black plastic piece. Now the black plastic piece will just kind of lift right out of here. Just like that. Something loose. And then that little O-ring, it'll just lift right out of this unusual shaped hole here. There it is. And it has this long needle valve. And this metering rod actually goes down inside that hole there, which is some type of metering valve for the flow of how much gas will come through this carburetor. It appears that there might be an adjustment by spinning this metering valve inside this thing. So I would not do any spinning. I can't tell if actually by turning the end of it inside there that extends the length of it or not, but we're going to leave it just the way it came apart. Now we're going to take the other cover off the other side. One thing I want to show you is these butterfly flappers stick down, and so you don't want to press down on this carburetor and bend those butterfly valves. You go ahead and shut the choke. You can let it sit there flat and even on your workbench. Now it gives you the ability to press down hard on these Phillips heads and get them out without stripping them. Okay, we've gotten the four screws out of this other cover plate. It was a little hard to get this off. This is probably the first time this has came apart. We've got a super small screwdriver, and we decided that the gasket might get damaged along the edges. So we went in right beside the bolt, and then we were able to separate it right there. So now let's go ahead and take it off. Be very careful. Half the gasket may stick to the cover, and half may stick to the body of the carburetor. So we don't want to tear it because we're not putting carburetor kits in this thing. We're just basically doing a clean out. Separate it from the body of the carburetor without breaking the gasket. I just had to lift it up so I can. Okay, I think we've got it without tearing it up. Yes. As you can see, there's actually a diaphragm on the back side of this cover plate, and the way that this works is it actually is vacuum loaded. You see how it goes in and out? If there's any holes or tears in this, the carburetor's not going to function. So as this thing gets sucked in, it comes down here and it and it pushes down on this lever, which lifts the needle valve, which allows more gas to come into the carburetor. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something, even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have, and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie, he didn't steal, he didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I've done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven.
you might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. It's got four screws inside this cover plate. The first one right here, when you take that out, you're able to be able to lift out this needle valve. And you can see how there's a spring on the back side of that lever for the needle valve. So you remember that spring's there so you don't lose. Now this needle valve spring and the crossbar just lifts right out of here. Okay, this crossbar could actually slide out of that piece if you want to, but it's not necessary. There's the spring that was behind it. Here's the needle valve. The needle valve will have a rubber tip on it right here and you can kind of inspect that see if it's super super dried out or if it's got maybe a ridge around it this one looks pretty good so i think we can reuse this if there was actually a ridge you know around the tip of it then it might need to be replaced next we'll take out the second screw and this one looks like it actually holds in the now you can use some needle nose pliers and this copper piece will just pull right out of there it has a o-ring around the part of it. There's actually a filter right there on the tip of it. Go on the bottom of it, you can see that little hole right down there, which is where the needle valve shuts off the gas flow. There's actually a hole that goes all the way through this thing. I'm using a needle to press through. And when I press through the first time, you actually see how I got a little bit of junk out of there. Next, we'll take out these two last screws that have this little cover plate here. You can use your needle nose pliers now and just lift it out. It might be a little snug at first. When you look on the back side of it, there's actually a little flapper valve right here. It's like a clear plastic flapper valve. If it's actually sticking out, you know, where it's warped or something, then you need to replace it. If you're not going to replace it, also would make sure it's not stuck from old gas sitting on it. With a small screwdriver, you can see how the, the flapper goes up and down like that. When you look down inside here, we actually have two jets that you can see right there. So we're going to blow those through with all the carburetor cleaner. We're going to use a combination of carburetor cleaner and just a bowl of gasoline to clean this thing up. Use the gas more to clean up just the larger surfaces, but we're gonna use the carb cleaner to get down inside all the little tubes. And I have like a little small cleanup brush and I can actually stick it in the gasoline. And kind of just clean stuff up like that. It's always important to wear your safety glasses, particularly when using the spray carb cleaner because it'll have a tendency to spray back in your face. I like using the one that has a straw on it and I take a little bit of electrical tape and I wrap around the tip of it. And I like the electrical tape to be able to slide in that red tube like that. Stick the hose down inside the jet, but then I'll use the electrical tape to slide down as a seal down inside there and push the electrical tape down on top of it. It'll give it a little blast. Inside it comes through, through the barrel like that. I have two of these jets right here. Let's get that one. And we'll slide the electrical tape down on top of it. So on this one, it actually comes out here right behind the butterfly valve. That one was actually plugged up at first when I first shot it. Notice we have this one hole that when we sprayed through that jet, it came out right here. But you also have four more holes right here in the ceiling of this carburetor. That one's a little hard to get to. So I don't know if it requires soaking the carburetor to make sure it's all opened up. Pretty good angle on those four little holes from inside here. So we'll hit those. Well, the carburetor cleaner is definitely going down inside the holes, so we can assume that they're not plugged. Pot right here. We'll go ahead and put the carburetor cleaner hose right down on top of that. It actually goes out and comes out this hole right here. It's at about a, you know, not quite a 45 degree angle to the base of the carburetor. Okay, we can actually go to inside these tube lines. We we'll probably need to have all three of these covers off to be able to blow on the top one and have it come out the bottom. You'll notice that one of the carburetors is actually a little bit different than the other two, and that's because it has a fuel pump on the side of it right here. Start by taking these four screws out of the side of the fuel pump. Okay, once you get the fuel parts off, you notice that there's a metal plate right here. I'm going to separate this very easily. 
as you pull it off. And then we have these two flapper valves down here also with screws to hold them in. There's another layer right here that separates between these two seams right here. <clears throat> you can see there's a star safety bolt right there that holds these two pieces together, one on both sides. And we don't have that tool, so we're just basically gonna spray this thing out with carburetor cleaner. And if it has a problem pumping enough gas, then we'll have to retake it apart and get that special tool to get this apart. Here's that there's some old gas that probably got you know, dried up and stuck down there on the O-ring. Uh, we've already mauled up the edge of it, so we can't even grab it with the pliers very good anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and soak it overnight in this product, Kim Dip Carburetor Parts and Cleaner. And you actually can immerse the whole carburetor into it. We'll also go and soak this fuel pump at the same time, since we weren't really able to take it apart with it. We also had to put a little bend in the corner of the can to be able to get this corner of the carburetor to slide down through the opening to get down into the liquid. Okay, we got that one carburetor soaking now. Okay, we just pulled these carburetors out of the solvent. Now it was soaking for overnight, and now it just pulls right out just perfectly easy. The holes in the side of it are actually plugged up, so it's a good thing we took the extra time to get it out. We used our brush and our gasoline to kind of clean this up. Now I'm going to kind of spray it with carburetor cleaner. Make sure there's no fibers or anything like that on it. There's a little pickle fork which goes underneath the needle valve. There's a little dent in the back side of this that goes over the spring. I'll kind of slide it in a little bit so we get underneath that lip of the needle valve. It'll come right down on top of the spring. All right, and you can test it and make sure that needle valve is going up and down and the spring is pushing it back up. This piece is not symmetrical, so there's one way that it goes in. You can see how one side has a little bit higher arch than the other side. There's three hose tips that come out the back side of this. And this is actually the oil injection. This unit here is about 25 years old, and you'll see how these oil lines have completely disintegrated. So if you haven't converted to premix, you know, and you're getting anywhere close to this kind of age, you definitely need to do that. Before you can reinstall these carburetors, these have to be capped off. I have to get the oil pump uh, premix conversion kit that will give us the little plugs for these. Here's our thumbnail for our other video on how to convert your oil pump to premix. Hey, as far as the internal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real, and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10:9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.